hi guys welcome to the next video of the recipe tutorial series I hope you guys are enjoying the videos in this video we will continue to see the SSL and the HTTPS connection we have one service get user info which requires HTTPS access and has implemented SSL security we have already verified this get user info service from the browser now the thing which we are trying to look in this video is how to access the same service from the Java client. We can change the URL here with the HTTPS protocol and port number as 8443. But the question is how to validate the certificate which will be returned by the server in response to access of a secured SSL service. So let's try to hit this service with the default client code and see what happens. Let's build this project. So we have just changed here HTTPS and the port number is 8443 and, and when we are trying to access the service let's see what happens. Okay, Run this JSP from the server. Okay, so you can see that we got an SSL handshake exception. Now it's saying that it is unable to find a valid certification path to the requested target. Now this means that we are not providing any code to validate the certificate which is coming from the server. So let's try to add some code to handle the HTTPS connection in our client here. The first thing which we need to do is create one default client config object. Now we will use this default client config object to create the client. We will pass this default client config object in the create method as a parameter. So now the client will be created with the default configuration present in the default client config object. Now this default client config object contains list of properties. What we want to do is add one HTTPS properties into this default client config object. So first let's get all the properties and add our HTTPS properties into it. this is the property name present in this HTTPS properties class and then here we need to provide an HTTPS property object If you see its constructor, it has three overloaded constructors. Now we'll use this constructor, which is uh, which is having hostname verifier and SSL context object. Now 
now we'll pass uh, null into this hostname verifier as it is not required uh, for our scenario the second parameter is the SSL context object so let's create one SSL context object and pass that to this HTTPS properties object it has one get instance method so here we need to provide the protocol name for which we want the SSL context object we will give SSL here that should be enough and now we need to initialize this SSL context object using its init method now this method requires key manager, trust manager and some random parameter the third parameter we can pass as null now let's try to understand what is the key manager and trust manager from the client's point of view now the key manager is actually required when server wants to authenticate the client so we send some client credential using this key manager and it will be validated with the key store present in the server in our case we can pass null here since we are using the basic authentication approach to authenticate the client so we don't need to pass this as a parameter and we'll pass null here for the first parameter and the third parameter ok now the second parameter is a trust manager array of trust manager now what is the trust manager? trust manager is actually used for authenticating the server certificate which is exactly what we want this requires a trust manager array and we'll initialize with our trust manager object here now to initialize this trust manager array let's create one class called server trust manager which implements x509 trust manager interface now x509 trust manager interface manages the x509 certificate which is basically the standard type of certificate and we'll also be getting x509 certificate from the server in our example so let's try to first create that class server trust manager it implements x509 trust manager now add all the unimplemented methods ok now here we have three methods check client trusted check server trusted and get accepted issues now we generally need to override this check server trusted and here we need to validate the certificate coming from the server now when we try to hit the service this method is actually called and the certificate from the server is passed into its parameter so we can get that certificate and validate it the check client trusted is called and used in the server side to authenticate the client in our scenario it will not be used so we will just leave it as it is 
and in the get accepted issuers we actually need to return the certificates whose certificate authority or the issuer is accepted in the check server trusted method ok now let's come to the validation part what are the validation approaches we are going to take in this check server trusted method there are actually three things which we need to do to complete the validation first check if the server certificate is valid and not expired and this we can do by calling check validity method of the certificate like this pull out the certificate and then call check validity method ok next we need to validate the certificate authority or the issuer and this we can do by calling get issuer unique id method of the certificate now once we get the unique id of the issuer from the certificate we need to match it with the trust store now trust store is a list of unique id of the certificate authority or the issuer in the client side now if it matches me that means the certificate is given by a trusted certificate authority i'm not showing that code because we are actually not getting a uh, proper certificate we are actually getting a self signed certificate which is not provided by any certificate authority so in our case we are going to get null from this get issuer unique id method but the logic should be what i explained now now the next thing to validate is the name of the server present in the certificate with the name of the host we are trying to hit in the url the name of the server from the certificate can be recovered by calling the get subject dn method now this method returns many fields but we should be interested with the field name cn that is common name which represents the server name in the certificate so we should extract its value and match it with the host we are trying to hit if any of these three validations fail then we should throw certificate exception and if we don't throw any exception here from this method then the client will consider that this certificate is trusted and the SSL can connection will be established and after this we will be able to access the service and get the response so let's complete our code here we've got our trust manager class let's instantiate that and pass it in the trust manager array so uh, trust manager and then we can pass this SSL context into this par parameter Okay, so now our code is ready to hit the HTTPS service. Our default client config object has the HTTPS properties object 
and the HTTPS properties object has the SSL context object and the SSL context object is been initialized with a trust manager and the actual violation is happening in the server trust manager this is our class in the check server trusted method so let's try to build this project and test it out let's run it on the server Okay, so now you can see that we are not getting SSL handshake exception. That means the certificate has been validated. So this is the way a Java client code can call a secured uh, RESTful service. I hope this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching.